if you want to improve your fitness with the help of technology, do you choose the heart rate monitor or the more expensive power meter? But more importantly, which one is going to help you improve the most? How do the two technologies differ and which is more accurate? Well, we're going to answer all of those questions and we're going to perform a real life test and reveal to you the true data. Power meters and heart rate monitors are nothing new. The tech has been around for decades and they simply allow you to measure your effort or the work done in a much more accurate way than just perceived exertion, saying something was hard or easy. But the ways in which they actually measure your effort is very different. When it comes to measuring your heart rate, you've got two options. Option one, use a chest strap like this, which has been used for a number of different years. It detects the small electrical pulses from your heart whilst in contact with your skin. Optical or photo... I'm not sure how to say it. Um, hang on, I'm just going to use AI to give it its proper name. Photoplethysmography. That, photoplethysmography to give it its proper name. This kind of tech is found on a lot of more modern sports watches and uses an infrared light sensor on the back of the watch, which is able to actually measure the expansion and contraction of your blood vessels and capillaries and arteries as the heart pumps through them. Um, and some of them can also measure the blood oxygen saturation in your blood, the amount of oxygen, or they can estimate it, that's present. Power meters, on the other hand, are small devices placed onto components of your bike. They measure the small amount of deflection or bend in that component when you apply force to it. And then to calculate power, well, it's simply the calculation of the amount of force you put on your bike multiplied by the cadence and the RPM that you're putting through it. Power meter devices can be placed into the rear hubs of bikes, into the cranks, and into the pedals as well. And they all kind of go about achieving the same thing, but in a slightly different way. Heart rate monitors and power meters are really useful tools, and they're not without their downfalls and differences in variability as well. For example, if you do an interval session with four by five minute VO2 max, you know, max efforts, it's normal that by the time you hit the last interval, your heart rate is higher for the same power output across all of the intervals. And this is normal, it's because your body is fatigued. It's also why you tend to see you have a slightly higher heart rate at the end of a long ride than you did at the start, even if you're keeping the power that you're riding at consistent. So that is known as heart rate drift. But when you start your ride, your heart rate can often be different for a given power output. So imagine you're doing your, your zone two ride, uh, your heart rate is sometimes higher and lower as soon as you begin that ride. And this is due to a whole host of external factors. So things such as the temperature, the, you know, the time of the day, um, your fueling, how much you've eaten, what you've eaten, you know, have you had caffeine, how long ago was that, how fatigued you are, or where you are in your menstrual cycle and this is known as heart rate variance. Power meters are not immune to variation either. I mean, most brands tend to claim accuracy of plus or minus one percent. That's not always the case. I mean we all seem to have that one mate who uh, claims to have a 400 watt FTP. <laughs> By all means tag that mate of yours in this video in the comments. Uh, but in addition to that other things do affect parameters quite a bit, such as temperature. And for temperature compensation, you have to make sure that you perform a zero offset on your power meter before you ride. This is different from calibration, something we'll explain later. To see how all this comes into play out here in the real world, I am gonna go and ride up the beautiful Rocca Corva climb out here in Girona, 10 kilometers long. It's gonna be beautiful. And I'm riding with four different devices recording my effort. My head unit connected to a power meter crank and a heart rate monitor strap. My watch recording my heart rate using an optical sensor. Photoplethysmography. And then a second head unit in my pocket connected to my power meter pedals. 
Now there's two reasons I've chosen this climb. Reason number one is because at 10 kilometers long, it's actually gonna mean we can gather some really useful data. Reason number two, it's actually a really cool climb and I just wanna cycle up it. I think that's fair enough. Right, to the climb. Well, Alex is off doing the hard work. Let's cover the most important factor that's likely to influence your choice, price. Now, if you want to set up that you can record and monitor your heart rate, that's gonna be significantly cheaper than using power. Both heart rate and power data can be recorded to your bike, computer, or head unit such as this Wahoo, or to a smartphone in your pocket. There's lots of apps out there and a lot of them are free and most of us already have access to this. But in terms of the hardware itself, that's where the price really differs. So a heart rate strap is typically gonna cost around 50 pounds, euros or dollars, but a heart rate capable watch um, can cost under 100, but some are available for around 500 pounds, euros or dollars. Whoa! We're not halfway there. Whoa! Over halfway to go. <laughs> but the more expensive sports watches you can get tend to have a lot more functionality and they're able to sync up not just to heart rate straps but other sensors and power meters too. And speaking of power meters, the kind of entry level is typically going to be a single sided power meter, which is either going to be a left side only crank or a pedal where one of the pedals is dumb and the other one is the power meter and that's around 300 pounds euros a dollar so this is the entry entry point there but as soon as you want double-sided power you're heading more towards the thousand pounds euros a dollars mark for a crank based unit or a double-sided pedal system full nerd mode now, the difference between calibrating a power meter and zeroing a power meter. A lot of people get these terms confused. So when you zero your power meter, it's like pressing tear on your scales at home when you weigh things. And that just zeroes it off so that it's accurate with respect to temperature. Although some power meters do uh, actually self calibrate uh, with regards to temperature. Now, the calibration is something that's performed in the factory of the manufacturer of your power meter as like a one-time thing and what they're doing there is setting the slope which is a, a measure of hertz over newton meters and it's looking at <laughs> I said, Dan, right, time to wake up. Let's head back down and find Ollie. I need a rest. So Alex, the results. Yes, I'm, I'm actually really excited to tell you. So the average, let's do heart rate first. Okay. Averages of the heart rate, the optical sensor on the watch, 142 beats a minute. Average from the chest strap, which is mm -hmm. the um, electrical sensor, 155 beat, um, beats per minute. Now that is an 8.4% difference in those numbers, which is more significant than I anticipated. Right, onto the power numbers next. Mm -hmm. Power meter pedals, 323 watt average. Power meter crank, 342 watt average. And that is a 5.5% difference between them. Again, a greater difference than I anticipated. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've just been looking at the numbers here. It's, I mean, it's pretty clear that the different tech gives different results and where, you know, where you measure, um, and that includes, you know, power meters, if you were to measure on, um, on the free hub as well, it's yeah. gonna give a different reading because you're effectively measuring the drivetrain friction as well. So things are always gonna be different, but that difference in measurement isn't necessarily the be all and end all um, in terms of, 
you know, if you're, if you're training and, and trying to get fitter. Another weakness of using heart rate is that it doesn't respond straight away. Looking at Alex's data from the climb, we can see his power instantly goes up to around the 320 mark and stays there. But his heart rate takes a few minutes to increase from 130 to 150. The first five minutes, his average heart rate is 150, and the last five minutes, his average heart rate is 159. If Alex were to ride at heart rate for this entire interval, then he may have gone too hard in the first five minutes and then too easy at the end. And it's also for this reason that heart rate is much more better suited for when you're training in long steady state intervals rather than say short anaerobic sprints. Accuracy isn't the only consideration though. Something can be less accurate, but if it's consistent, then it's not the end of the world. So for example, your power meter might underread consistently by 10 watts all the time. This would still serve as a useful yardstick for training and measuring your relative improvement over a period of time. It just wouldn't be that great if you were racing on Zwift. Whereas if you have a good power meter, that is consistent all the time. And it's here where you get combining power data with heart rate data is really useful for riders and coaches because it gives them greater insight as to how the body is responding to a given power output. Overall, power is better because it's more consistent, but it is far more expensive and you can train very effectively with just heart rate. Just make sure you understand how it responds. I think the limiting factor though is not necessarily what type of tech or piece of equipment we're using. I think it's fair to say it's probably people's knowledge and understanding of training and techniques and the desire to actually work hard at it continually. I've managed to train and prepare to race four world championships in the past using heart rate monitors alone. So I think it's fair to say the tech is capable of achieving a lot. So takeaway from this whole um, video is, it's a training tool rather than the be all and end all everything. And if you want the most cost effective solution to improve your training and fitness, well, a heart rate monitor enables you to do that for just a fraction of the price. Right, can we go get some bocadillos now? <laughs> yeah, we can get bocadillos. Let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts on power meters or heart rate monitors. And as always, subscribe to GCN Tech to show your love and support for us and turn your notifications on. I actually want an Epinada. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>